Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how I made this 3D custom kit bashed miniature of Caduceus Clay from the Mighty Nine in Critical Role Campaign 2. Oh, that's just beautiful. With one of my biggest D&D &D inspirations being Critical Role and jumping in on the second campaign and falling in love with those characters, I decided I needed to fill the gap from the existing Mighty Nine box set and make myself a Caduceus Clay. I actually first made this model a few years ago. You might have seen the model pop up in a few of my previous videos, and some of you actually asked about it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made the whole thing from start to finish. To start off, we're gonna have a look at a little bit of artwork of Caduceus and let Talison explain what his character looks like. Tall, uh, not necessarily healthily uh, thin furball. Oh. Who's pale and a, a kind of a grayish color and has a Big shock of weirdly pink mohawk hair. No. I know I want to include his crystal, his pink hair, the teapot, and a few mushrooms around the base. So I jumped over to Thingiverse to see what I could find. There is a perfect Caduceus clay bust. This will work brilliantly for the head, and lucky for me, there is this fur bog model that someone else has made that is almost perfect. We're just going to throw on a crystal for the staff and a few other bits and pieces to help add the final touches to Caduceus' character. Just sit with a kettle and the world will come to you. Once we have everything we need, we bring it into Chitterbox and scale it down appropriately. Once in here, you can play around with the scale, rotation and position to sort of merge these things together. I refer to this as 3D kit bashing, but essentially I'm just collaging different 3D models until eventually I'm happy with the way they lay out. I like those. Feels right. Once everything's in place, I save as all models and export it as an STL. I can then re-import both of these, scale them to be about the appropriate size, and then set them up for supports and print them out. So after three hours and 40 minutes of printing, here we have our resin models. Once we had our miniatures, I cleaned them with isopropyl alcohol, and when normally I would cure them in UV light, I decided to do the modifications first, as once cured, they tend to shatter. And I plan on clipping these apart. We start by removing the head and these little wing capes off the back of the main body and then clip the head off the bust. Since these haven't been cured yet, they cut quite easily without shattering. Yes, you could do this digitally by cutting up the two models, but I haven't taught myself that yet, so I'm doing it this way. Feel free to try these same methods with non-3D printed miniatures as it's the exact same kit bashing style. Next up, I use the Dremel and clippers to take off any last little remnants of resin to help the two pieces fit together better. This is a little bit of back and forth to make them fit just right before adding a pile of gel super glue to help hold the head in place. I also use a little bit of the gel super glue to sit against his hair and fill in any gaps that I might have missed before coming in with the clippers and cutting away this braid that I'd forgotten to remove from the main body. This can be hacked away quite rough as Caduceus has a lichen moss growing across his armor and this will fit that perfectly. Next thing is his small left arm shield, which I just pulled from some old 3D printed parts. I'm not sure where I got this one, but it fits perfectly. And now we're pretty happy with the model and how it's all stuck together, it's time to cure this resin. So we throw it into the UV curing machine for about a minute and let it do its thing. And now it's time for the prime. Do you ever knock over your miniatures with the pressure of the spray paint? Just try spraying a little bit of excess cheap paint on the base and placing the miniature here. It helps hold everything down while you hit it with that compressed air particularly useful when you do the zenithal highlight on an unbased miniature and you want to keep that direction coming down from the top. And now while he's out in the sun to dry, 
we can start working on his bass. In the past, I've actually 3D kit bashed some bases for this, covered in life and mushrooms and different kinds of lichen and plants. But in this case, I'm gonna build it the classic way. So we're gonna grab some of these bases that I've pre-textured and go from there. Bringing in as many little bits and pieces of 3D accessories that I can find. The link for these will be in the description and they're available on Thingiverse. Then adding some base paint and glue before bringing in some flocks and sticking these all down with some watered down Mod Podge. Now Caduceus needs some more life than that. So we're gonna bring in some variation and some nice pink lichen and flowers to match his style before bringing in a bush and then adding on some details from a few of these little 3D printed parts. And we can't have Caduceus without a few mushrooms. So we'll paint up a couple of these little guys and glue them onto the base. Hello, mushrooms. Now the base is done, it's time to move back onto painting the Caduceus model itself. I'm gonna start with some contrast browns on his boots as well as the wooden areas of the staff. And then a Militarum contrast green for his pants. Continuing with a few browns on his belt before coming in with the contrast white for all of the areas of clothing that I wanted to remain a white tone. Then coming in with a bright pink over all of the hair and skin, using this as a nice base layer for his pale gray fur. Next up, using Skeleton Horde contrast paint on the ropes and any of the bindings around his armor, before coming in with a much darker pink for the hair. And finally, adding the silver detailing to his armor, teapot, and the small areas on the staff. Next up, I gave all of the skin and fur a wash in a Citadel Crimson Wash to add some layers of shadow and depth before coming in with a Nuln Oil over the rest of the model. Off camera, I added in some splotches of the pink lichen, I painted the crystal and I added some eyes. And now we're going to come in with a cold grey to go over all of the fur and skin tone areas of the model to give him his nice pale washed out look. And after a couple of small details, I call that one done. Might be time to warm up another kettle. This Caduceus Mini turned out even better than the original. I made him a little bit bigger than last time, which works perfectly as he's meant to be about seven foot tall. As well as the fact that in the last couple of years, my painting skills have increased quite a bit. So the details in his face are far superior to my previous build. Oh, that's just beautiful. Hello, mushrooms. The earth will remember you. And now that I've got my Caduceus, maybe I should go out and get the full Mighty Nine box set. Or maybe I could kit bash a few more. As usual, I love what I've built this week and he's gonna have a place on my shelf with everything else that I've made so far. If you guys have any other requests or something else you could think of that would be cool for me to make, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. And remember, never stop making stuff. What better reason for life than the nourishment of others?